Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video, I'm going to take a look at Taunt Druid. Taunt Druid is a very powerful deck, and it is based on creating taunt minions and then resummoning those taunt minions with Hadronox. And that doesn't happen just once. Because first you want to get taunt minions, then you want to play your Hadronox, and you want to naturalize your Hadronox, so Hadronox dies, your taunt minions are resummoned. Then after that, you want the Witching Hour, a new copy of Hadronox. And then you want to either naturalize that one too, or preferably Carnivorous Cube that one. And so the cube with Hadronox, you get a board full of taunt minions again, and you have a couple of Hadronoxes inside the cube. And then once the cube dies, you get some Hadronoxes killed again, you get board full of minions again, and then you have another Witching Hour, and you have another cube, and that's a lot of minions. So how can anything survive this? Well, actually, Taunt Druid, when it's not targeted, is a very, very powerful deck. And it's able to beat many decks. But when it's targeted, its weaknesses come to life. Because Hadronox is a beast. And Witching Hour summons a random friendly beast that died this game. So the Warrior has Cornered Sentry, Mage has Polymorph, Shaman has Hex, so there are various ways to get other beast minions into the pool, so that Hadronox is not necessarily easy to re-summon. And there are also ways to prevent Hadronox from dying in the first place, because Skulking Geist can remove Naturalizes, and if you can't Naturalize your Hadronox, you can't kill it in a single turn. And when you can't do that, if your opponent has Thinkmaster Overspark, Hex, Polymorph, they can simply turn your Hadronox into something else, and you can never pull off your actual combos. So you're trying to get a lot of taunt minions out there, you're trying to re-summon those, and you're trying to be fast enough so that if your opponent has some of those cards in their decks, that they wouldn't be able to use them too much. Also note that you don't always have to kill your Hadronox immediately. Sometimes simply the presence of Hadronox can be a powerful tool. Some decks don't run silence, and even some of the decks that do run silence, if you can then kill the Hadronox off later and resummon it from Witching Hour, that might be enough. You don't have to get value from the death rattle of every Hadronox if you're able to create multiple of them. So pay attention to what your opponent has and what sort of risks you can take with your Hadronoxes. That's an important aspect of playing this deck. Another key card in addition to Hadronox is the Lich King. Because sometimes you end up in a position where, okay, you can create a bunch of taunts, but those taunts might not be influential enough and they might not be able to do enough things in order to win the game. But the Lich King, if you can get the Lich King to die and you can summon more Lich Kings, and sometimes you can even summon a couple of Lich Kings at once, then you have immensely powerful minions on the board. Because Lich King has 8 attack, whereas all the other taunt minions that you have, they have either 4 attack or 3 attack, so they are not nearly as intimidating. Although there is also one key combination that can make this much more intimidating, and that is with Branching Paths. Branching Paths is a very complex card. You can use that to gain armor, you can use that to draw cards, but especially in Taunt Druid, you are actually often wanting to use that to give plus one attack to your minions. Because that is one of the best ways to get lethal with Taunt Druid. Taunt Druid is still a druid deck. So when you go to the mulligans, okay, you're mulliganing for wild growth and you're mulliganing for nourish. You want your ramp. You want to have as much mana available as soon as possible so that you can play your big taunt minions on the board and start getting those taunt minion board resurrects. If you're playing a very slow matchup, you expect that you are going to be the beat down, the opponent will be very much on the defense. Keeping the Lich King, keeping Master Oak Heart is something that you can definitely consider. On the other hand, if you are the one who is being the defender, then Spellstones can be good, Naturalizes can be good, Swipes can be good, Oak and Summons can be good. It really depends a little bit on the opponent. Swipe is good against tokens. I would keep a Naturalize against Warlock because I would be afraid of a giant. And while you do want to Naturalize your Hadronox, against Warlock it's not strictly always necessary, because Warlock typically cannot transform the Hadronox into anything else, so even if they silence the first one, you can just witching our new ones. Whereas staying alive against an 8-8 giant is pretty important. 
Overall, I feel that Tondra is a bit of a gimmicky deck because it is very powerful in a meta that is not prepared for it. But when the meta is really prepared for dealing with death rattles and transforming minions, Tondrid gets weaker quite quickly. Tondrid is not popular enough to really be targeted as such right now, but ironically many of the cards that are good against death rattle hunter, like Hex and Polymorph, are also extremely good against Tondrid. It is just naturally so powerful that you can still climb with this deck even if there's some level of targeting. But be aware that some matches are just going to be decided by minions being transformed into other minions. Which I guess is no less fair than you ramping up and playing Master Oka than then Hadronox and boom boom boom. So that sort of blowouts can definitely happen with this deck. I have a bunch of interesting gameplay material of this deck for you, so let's go take a look at it in action. We even have this, have you noticed? on the game board. We even have these symbols over here. Originally these were supposed to open your graveyard. There's one for the opponent and one for you. But in the end they ended up doing nothing. So I want to see my graveyard. But I can't. What is this? Some kind of control paladin. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, I, I have never been a fan of this card either. Well, this is an interesting hand for sure. How do I handle all this ramp? None odd paladin. Yeah, I think it's probably some kind of control. I'll drop this fellow on the board. Sure, you can coin Blessing of Kings on this, but... No, I don't want to draw these Ironwood Golems. Let's gain some mana crystals. I can kill off his token too. Well, with Branching Bats I could theoretically gain some armor. That would allow the Ironwood Golem to attack, but... We'll see about that. Is the Snourish going to be spent to draw three cards? Yep. That's a mech, mech paladin indeed, or death rattle paladin or something. There are a few alternatives. I don't even have an ultimate infestation. I think I can go to 10 mana for next turn. I'm just concerned that he's going to magnetize a lot of stuff on this. I think I'm going for 10 mana. I'm playing the other golem. I'll just, I could hero power there. I think it's fine. Let's deal a bit of damage to the egg. Eggs are going to come back from Kangors anyway, most likely. There's them cubes. There's them cubes. I still have to play Oakheart here. Frilla. He may or may not have a silence. Let's see. I mean, he could have equality consecration here. Wipes this board rather nicely. That's a big cube. Oh, he has a bunch of big stuff out there. And equality consecration is always a thing. Because if it kills the hate, yeah, I'm really troubled by my Hadronox dying. Oh well. Anyway, Lich King time. Maybe this is just hero power. Let's see what happens here. I mean, if he doesn't find equality, then... And Paladins have pretty bad card draw. So he just might not be able to find an equality. That's a way to win. Other than that, he has pretty decent odds. Now we're getting really interest to really interesting positions. I think we're going to give these minions some attack. That's really what I'm thinking. Then 
and I can trade away the 11-7, which he might be able to resurrect, of course. I know that, obviously. This one can hit over there. I think I'll also rat over there for three. There's some eggs inside. And there's the 2-6. I can kill the 2-6 with this fellow. Then I'll hero power down the 1-1. One, one. And these fellows are going face. So... We ask the Paladin if he has found the equality. And silence. Because the Hadronox is alive. Okay. Tarim is definitely a decent answer. Then if he has equality afterwards, that still works. MC tech stealing Hadronox. Do you think he runs MC tech in that deck? I don't, but he could. Okay, we're going to nourish for three cards here. Oh dear. That sounds that sounds bad. Well, this one goes here. Yeah. This one goes there. This one goes here. Hadronox goes there. We get some taunts on the board again. And I'm going to Witching Hour another Hadronox. So I play around equality. He needs silence. He needs silence and he needs equality. So do you happen to have silence and equality? Because if you don't, then, well, killing this board doesn't do much if it just comes back again. Yeah. Killed that board. Nice. We get a new one. Well, he does have enough minions here to kill double Lich Kings. Never does he have enough to survive after that. I don't think he does. Does he? Because I have branching pads and swipe. Yes, 21. I have a 12. This one can't attack. 12, 13. 13 plus 8. Ah, that's easily enough. I can also do it this way. All the ways lead to Rome. Boom. Do I keep a golem? I suppose I can keep a golem with a stroke. Although summons would be better. Now I have both. Okay. Oh, Drogarino. Alright, he mulliganed most of his hand. Flesh fails. Try crystal. Crystallizer build? Fine. Okay, I think I'm coining the wild growth here. That means that I have the wrath open if I want to use it. No, double oak and summons with one ironwood golem in hand. Feels bad, man. Hmm, there's no reason for me to hit into that one. That doesn't really do anything for me. So we just grabbed that one armor for now. Is that a minion that I have to wrath, though? He didn't have a tug then. Because if I pull. The tree e6. Can he kill the tree e6? With deadly poison as size of an agent, he could. Is there any other way for him to kill the tree e6 at 4 mana? Without using the fledgling. He has tree on board, he needs another tree. Well, cold blood does it. And then fledgling goes face. I think I'll still pull the tree e6 from the deck. Let's give it a try. Because even if the fledgling gets to go face, there's a good chance. Void Ripper does it too. There's still a good chance that I can, like, hero power and rat it, for example. But we'll see. Okay, now I can't deal with that. And next turn he can play Fungal Man, sir. Well, that's a problem. Nourishing myself up to 8 mana next turn. 
Vile Spine. There was no way for him to use Vile Spine for four mana. He doesn't have a coin. He doesn't have a prep either because he's a rogue. And he couldn't use a Fungal Mancer yet. But I did not. I underestimated Void Ripper. So he plays Fungal Mancer next turn. This one hits here. Stagger hits there. 5 5 Fletchling goes face. How do I kill the 5 5 Fletchling? I don't know. But if I play Nourish for Crystals, how do I swing this back? I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe there was something I needed to do earlier in this game. I just felt like this was a position where I was in a very poor spot. I had the option to Wrath this originally. I did not play around the Void Ripper. Yeah. Void Ripper was a card that I did not consider. Well, I can Wrath the Fledgling now, so I'm still in this. This is not going great, but I'm still in this. Too bad there's nothing left in the Oaken Summons. And I don't have enough mana to play Primordial Drake next turn. So I don't think I can do it. It really seems to me that I can't. But who knows? 11, 14 damage. He needs 10 from hand. He could definitely have 10 from hand. But I don't even have anything really strong for next turn. I think I need to draw 3 cards. I don't really see my way out of this mess. But I think taking away 6 damage right now should be okay. He has not had a Fungal Mancer. But obviously this is not looking good. I would need something really... Oh! He wants to push. He really wants to push now. That's probably enough to push. Looks like it. He can kill anything I can play next turn. That's already 10 damage. That's already actually... 13 damage. But I can't even play anything really good here. There's nothing that I can nourish into that would be useful. Nope. Well, let's say he couldn't find any Vile Spines. And let's say he burned Vile Spines and Leroy. That was nice. Nice move. Very nice tempo move with the Myras. Well, he definitely pulled Leroy. And that's lethal. Beautiful. Hey, no need to overdo it. You already had it. I do wonder if there was something I could have done differently in that game. That was a very interesting game. Kind of nope. I guess that's nope. I could have done it with those two. So... Branching Path, Swipe and Obliterate was, was also lethal. So one Obliterate in two Death Knight cards would have also done it. Two Death Coils or one Obliterate. I didn't do the math on Death and Decay. I actually thought Death and Decay wasn't enough. Was it? Oh, it was six damage. Maybe it would have been enough too. So I suppose he just didn't draw anything good then. So this one is Shadowwalk Arena, and I have choices to make, because I could coin Oaken Summons, and I could get a 3-6 on this board right now, or I can do nothing and then I can coin Nourish next turn. What if he plays the Serenite Chain Gang next? Then my answer to the Serenite Chain Gang is coin Nourish. Coin Nourish gives me... I think I can afford to do Nourish on 5, because I have double Oaken Summons in hand. I think I'm going Oaken Summons, Oaken Summons, Nourish in this particular position with this particular hand. Yeah. 
So now he has an elemental in hand. Then the guy wouldn't be way better to clear Wardbox turns before. Yeah, so I guess he had a good read that I'm not going to have that one in hand. I think this is working out well so far. Now he could have grumbled this turn. But that's not a grumble. Is he going to have a Hex in hand? Nice. But this is the moment when he's least likely to have a Hex. So this is the moment where we jam down the Lich King. He's only 10 cards deep into his deck. Do you have one of those Hexes right here, right now? Yes, he does. Every Shaman has had a Hex. I play the Lich King very early every time. Just so that I would be able to deal with it. This stuff, but I unfortunately cannot. There, there must always be a hex. Sleep a dragon time. I will give him one more draw from the mana tide. Why would he grumble instead of waiting for Zola grumble? How long can he wait? Because I'm hitting face. I'm hitting lots of face. Okay, I can give him just one draw from the acolyte. That's something at least. Draw three with nourish. I think that's where this is headed. I can draw one with the wild growth too. Because I like cards. Then I death and decay the board. Okay, I've dealt with the chain gangs. I dealt with one acolyte, one mana tide. Oh, double farsight. That's so nasty. That electro into double farsight is so nasty. I mean, if you can pick up like Crumble and. Now, so, so land something. Or... Whoa. That's really nasty. Do I have to give him two cards? I don't want to give him two cards. His hand is also so empty that I can't meal. And Lich King was destroyed with a hex. Yes. There are a couple of ironwood golems in the pool. And that's pretty much it. And he can volcano to draw three cards from the Acolyte. I'll give him two. I'll give him to you from the Acolyte. Is Oak Hut worth it with only one Dragon Hatcher? I think it is. But I'm not sure, maybe it isn't. You can argue both ways. The combo is almost here. The combo is almost here. I think I just deny him getting any of this stuff back. Really don't want to give him a solo back. Alright. Hasn't used any AoE yet. Not a single piece. Has one hex left too. Next turn is probably going to be crucial. If he AoEs this turn, then it's obviously Hadronox naturalize. Right. I think that's the only thing that can give me victory. He can't play Shadow Rock next turn. Does he have enough mana to wipe the board? Lightning Storm and Volcano can do it, right? I think Lightning Storm Volcano can do it. I still have to do it with this line. Lightning Stone Volcano can do it. It's here. 
We'll see. Then I have to get win the 50-50 roll on the Witching Hour. Oh, that was a spectacular miss on the Mind Control tech. It's not even a 50-50. It's actually a little bit worse. Yeah, unless I can kill him now. Let me see. So, branching paths. And I have 8 plus 6, which is 14, plus 4, which is 18. Yeah, this should be lethal, right? Comfortably. Comfortably lethal. First it really took over the entire ladder. And then after just a little while, it turned out that okay, it's actually not that great. And people countered it very heavily, and it fell apart completely. So don't read it's only good in a meta where it's not countered. And the counter cards are Skulking Geists, Polymorphs, Hexes, Thinkmaster Overspark even. And I have seen them all today. I've seen Skulking Geists, many Skulking Geists, many Hexes, many Polymorphs. It's not that they're targeting this deck specifically, but what they are doing is they're still running those cards that actually make this playing this deck impossible. Shudderbook Shaman does it, Big Spell Mage does it. They just... they just do it. Odd Paladin is intriguing. Because if I can survive, I can win, potentially. But right now I have no ramp and I have no early taunts. I do have a swipe. I need to swipe the turn before he can play level up. And because he has that coin out there, that's going to be sooner than I would like. Because he could like, if he plays here, especially if he plays hero power lost in jungle now, then I obviously need to swipe next turn. If he does this, then I probably don't need to swipe. Although he could play a fungal mancer. But now I suppose I can do this instead. I can use the spellstone to kill this one, and I can use my hero power to kill one of the tokens. So now there is no Fungal Mance aboard. So just pushing this hero power button every turn turned out to be pretty good. More stone hills? Well that was a snap pick so it's probably Tarim. That bodes ill. If I nourish here, but he has Fungal Mancer level up, I'm still in a poor spot. But if I don't nourish, then I have nothing really good to do next turn. I believe I have to nourish. Because then if he doesn't buff up these minions, then that means that I can get the Primordial Drake on the board. I mean, I'm going to have to play the Drake in, even if he buffs up the minions, but... Fungal Mancer is most likely to come. I would play it over here, I suppose. That is very, very weak, though. I would definitely not go for that against the Druid who is going to 8 mana. But does he even know that I'm taunt yet? He doesn't. Alright, we get the kills on all of that stuff. He has two Stonehill Defender Taunts in hand. I think this one is Tarim. That was such a snap pick. The other one could be something less useful. If I don't top deck the Dragon Hatcher, then Oakheart will pull it next turn. Then there's obviously the Tarim possibility. Do I have to do something else than Oakheart? Because he's getting a bit of stuff out here. Now I think this still has to be the Oak Heart line. Even if he buffs these up, then how much is it going to matter against an Oak Heart?
I mean, even if they are tree trees, then so what? Even if there's Tarim. Even if there's a Tarim, it's still not that great. There was the Tarim. So now I have the Primordial Drakes are dead and Ironwood Golems are dead. That's just four taunts from Hadronox at the moment. Is that enough or do I want more? Now he has already spent the Tarim. I suppose that will do. I suppose those taunts will do. Oh, it was just three. Oh, just three taunts. I was wrong about that. Maybe this isn't strong enough then. Slightly uncertain. There's still one more taunt that he picked up. He still has the fungal mancers left. Oh, he's running Void Reapers. That's pretty solid. Oh, if he also has a mold that gives Divine Shield. Now this fellow can't attack yet. I may have to use a swipe next turn. Just a mold that gives taunt. Okay. I think I'm going to have to use a swipe. Branching paths to draw more. Yeah, because I need to find the Hadronox, right? No, I mean the Witching Hour. Turns out this wasn't over. Well, there's a Witching Hour, so then I have the opportunity to also armor up. It's like a Witching Hour cube. Do I feel safe at 18? Let's grab the armor. I'm actually going to do it like this. I think this will be good enough. Because I have the Witching Hour cube. And that will pull... Golems and Drakes again. So he can make a board full of tree trees. But he can almost do that anyway. So it could be better. It's not all bad. He has already spent a Tarim. He has one more taunt from Stonehill Defender. That was not a snap pick. I don't think it's Tarim. Because he snap picked that one that was Tarim and I had a read that it's Tarim. But I don't have a similar read. I do think there's going to be a level up. There could be double level up if he's satisfied with just making five of these. Then he gets some 5-5s five who, on the surface, seem to be able to do some value trading. But not really because of the swipe. And now if he attacks into the Primordial Drakes, then those become such, such sweet swipe targets. Now he tries to play around that a little bit. Intriguing. Swipe doesn't quite kill everything. I would also want my cube to die before he can silence it. Oh, he's not running silence if he's running Void Ripper, right? I think we're swiping here. Then I hero power down one of these fellows. Like this. And then I'll play Oak and Summons, which activates this one to attack. Something like this? I don't know. This felt okay. Both level ups are gone now. There's one more taunt from the Stone Hill.
8, 11, seems good. Reporting for duty. I have Florist in my deck. Florist? I don't think Florist does a whole lot here. Oh, let me just go. Yeah, that's lethal. I think we keep the summons. Are the legendary spells super necessary in Zoo and or Drogue? <coughs> no, they are not super necessary. You can play both without the legendary spells. I think Myra's in or Drogue is even better than the Solarium in Zoo. Because Myra's absolutely wins you quite a lot of games even. If you're running out of steam. You can use that, you can dig for lethals. It's just a very flexible card because it draws so much. And you don't want games to go long anyway. Solarium in two is less useful. Because you have to spend those cards immediately. So it's it's a late game refill, but you already have your hero power, so you have some ways to refill anyway. So it's easier to replace the Solarium in two than it is to replace Myros in or Drogue. Purely because that Myrus is so incredibly good. So it's an even look. This will be good. Okay. Next turn there can be a giant. There can still be a giant next turn. And I could like coin Oaken summons. That will upgrade my spell stone. Yeah. Now we're going into Oaken Summons. It will improve my draws as well. No giant. I like that a lot. I really do. Tree armor to upgrade. Easier said than done. I think I'll play another golem here. I could have also duck with the rats, trying to find a nourish for next turn. I wonder if that would have been better. He's like really hard going for the seven sevens. That's what this looks like anyway. Intriguing approach. What do you think about the artifact? Looks really interesting. I really want to try it when it's so that I can play it. I think I need to draw a card here. Can't find the good stuff. I need to gain another tree armor to upgrade that. That's nasty. Can't do it next turn with the hero power. I'm not very happy about my current position. I even less happy that he had Geist on six. Yeah, that sucked. Don't have anything particularly good available here. I could try to draw with the Wrath, but I think that I'm Soon in a position where I will have to use Wrath for damage. Dragon Hatcher is still in the deck. Hadronox is still in the deck. Do I need Oakheart next turn? Or is it, No, it's Lich King next turn. And Oakheart the turn after. That's the way this has to go. Lich King next turn, Oakheart on 9. Hope I don't draw he Dragon Hatcher or Hadronox in the next two draws. Then try to kill off the Hadronox and revive it. That is what needs to happen. Why did he use a Spellbreaker like that? Does he have a second Spellbreaker in hand? I guess he has to, right? There has to be another spellbreaker in hand. Why would you throw away a spellbreaker like this if you don't have it? 
But now, I must not draw Hadronox or Dragon Hatcher. And then some scary moments. Lich King cards are scary. If I top the Hadronox or Dragon Hatcher, no! I still need to pull the Hadronox. If he can't kill me this turn, I can kill off the Hadronox and then I can Witching Hour and cube it. There was the second silence. I still get the Hadronox kill. I have to hope it's enough, because there's a couple of Lich King cards. I just have to hope this is enough, but this might not be enough. Really concerned that this is not going to be enough. He might have lethal this turn, or in the near future. So not yet. He still has two Hellfires left. And a bunch of Lich King cards. So many Lich King cards. If I play Death and Decay, tank, face tank this. Let's see. I can have a board clear. But that'll be very, very low. And he has those Lich King cards available. Any other alternatives? I would have just a Primordial Drake on the way. That's probably superior. This is probably better. I'm at 12. There's no silences. 5 plus 6 is 11. So double hellfire doesn't kill me. Lich King cards can kill me, but they can always kill me. There's no way for me to survive all the Lich King cards. If I face tanked, Played Oak and Summons, I would be at 11 against an empty board. Sure, that's something. Just kill your cube and cube the Hadro. I didn't think that was going to win me the game. I felt like that was not going to win me the game. Six plus four is ten. Thirteen, fourteen. 10, 13, 14. Yeah. I didn't think cubing the Hadronox was going to win me the game, because I was concerned that with his Lich King cards he would be able to push through. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.